We are on an island just off the southwest coast of Scotland, and that in there is a venomous snake in the wild. This glen is actually full of them. So welcome to one of the coolest places in the British Isles, the Isle of Arran. Unlike the majority of people, I've always had a soft spot for snakes, and it's always blown my mind that we have a venomous species living amongst us here in Britain. While we're here on Arran, however, we may as well add some more wildlife to the mission. You see, Arran is known as Scotland in miniature, as it includes all of the main things that make Scotland great. Mountains, lochs, heather, forests, and stunning coastline. But that terrain is also matched by its wildlife, as it also contains every one of what is referred to as Scotland's Big Five animals. The Red Deer, Golden Eagle, Common Seal, Red Squirrel and the Otter. So our aim is to also find and film them today too. Helping us is Jake, a ranger for the National Trust of Scotland. He lives here on Arran and knows the island like the back of his binoculars. If anyone is going to help us achieve all six animals in one day, it's this guy and that beard. Our first animal of the day, red squirrels. Jake, Aaron is known as a real hub for red squirrels. What are you guys doing specifically to help the numbers here? Okay, so here within uh, the country park and uh, the wider uh, NTS property, we are uh, really promoting native broadleaf woodland. Obviously that's the ideal habitat for them, as well as this sort of mixed uh, coniferous woodland. And on top of that, we have our squirrel hide here, which the public can come to, to enjoy hopefully close up sightings of them. And through that, we get a lot of public support to help us with our work. Okay, so if you're saying you've, you've deliberately set something up, I'm expecting like a beehive of red squirrels, like hundreds of them just banging into each other, frankly. Is that gonna be the case? Uh, it, probably not hundreds, but at any one time we might have uh, three, four, we've seen as many as half a dozen at one time. So we'll see, we'll see if our luck's with us today. Okay, and how many red squirrels do you reckon are on the Isle of Arran? Certainly hundreds. Um, okay. Yeah, it's a healthy population here. Okay, let's go check them out. As a kid, red squirrels were an incredibly rare sight even in Scotland, and that's because they became incredibly endangered due to the introduction of the American grey squirrel in the 1870s. The grey squirrels are bigger, stronger, and they essentially snuffed out the reds almost to extinction. Not only do the greys outcompete the reds in terms of food, but they also carry a virus that doesn't do much to them, but very much kills off the reds. Once a common sight in rural Scotland, the numbers of red squirrels got all the way down to just 120,000 when they used to be in their millions. Thankfully, in our lifetime, the numbers have started to recover thanks to organisations like Saving Scotland's Red Squirrels. Good name. It's estimated that red squirrels are back up to around 140,000, but that is still minuscule compared to the greys, but hopefully, due to more projects like this at Brodick Castle, population will go through the roof again. Being a woodland species, 75% of the UK red squirrel population is here in Scotland and what really helps recover those numbers is creating red squirrel strongholds, especially on islands that grey squirrels haven't got to yet. The Isle of Arran is one of those places where there are no grey squirrels, so the red squirrels are thriving. Go on you reds! After that fairly easy start, we headed off from Brodick Castle into Glen Rosa in Jake's Land Rover in search of our other animals. And a hundred yards down the road, we hit our next jackpot. With a wingspan of over two meters, the golden eagle is the UK's second biggest bird of prey behind the white-tailed eagle. It uses that wingspan to glide using warm air currents around the island. But like a lot of our bigger predatory animals here, they were previously hunted as trophies. So now it's estimated there are only around 510 breeding pairs in the UK. And that up there is one of them.
Jake, there's something going on up there. It's not just an eagle. What's, what's happening? Yeah, so one of our eagles here is being mobbed by another bird, much smaller bird. I'm not entirely sure what it is. Uh, they're a fair distance away, but I think it could be a kestrel. Um, you can see it just flying off to the right now. Um, but yeah, we've got a pair here in Glen Rosa. Um, we can only see one of them currently, um, but we're quite lucky to find them. Uh, this is a good day though. Uh, the sun is out. There's a bit of a breeze, and so we can see it circling there on the thermals. Is that just so it can fly efficiently, really? It just needs to kind of glide along those? That's it, yeah. It was wanting to get some height advantage so that they can obviously scan for prey. They will cover a fairly large area in their search for food. So on the food front, I mean, it's the second largest bird of prey in the UK. Could that take out a small deer? Uh, yeah, it's been known for them to take out small deer, absolutely. They'll also go for, for hares. Uh, but they'll, they'll go right down to much smaller things as well. They'll, they'll even take uh, voles, other birds, obviously. So they're quite opportunistic in that regard. Okay, so how many do you reckon there's on the island? How many eagles? Uh, it's hard to say exactly, but we know we've got uh, several breeding pairs. There's another pair which are well established up in Loch Grenza. Cool. A lot of people, if they ever visit the distillery up there, uh, can sometimes be treated to seeing the golden eagles there or if they're in Glen Catacol on a nice walk. Um, and then we, we've got other pairs that are um, down south in the forestry. Very cool. So we are incredibly lucky to have seen that straight away. Absolutely, because we've literally driven in here and, and pulled up and then, yeah, uh, one of your crew has uh, spotted it straight away, so. Okay, well it's, a, it's a good omen. Yeah, hopefully so, yeah, hopefully. Okay, I want my next thing to be an adder. Okay. Are we going to find them along this road? Uh, we may do. Uh, Glen Rose has got a really good population of adders and uh, one of my colleagues, our senior ranger, Kate, has been studying them. Oh, cool. For the past couple of years, and so she's given me some of her, uh, her, uh, you know, up-to-date gen on where we might find them. So, okay, I'm very excited for that. We are deeper into the glen, and we haven't found a snake yet, but I have found this in the bracken. Look at that, Jake. This looks like a pretty healthy snake. Yeah, it is, yeah. I mean, that would be a, a, a good-sized adult. And this is obviously the, the shed of it, so they shed their skins every so often. That helps to keep their, their uh, scales in good condition. Um, and we can tell it's... Uh, if, we, if we had other species of snake here, we'd be able to tell it was an adder, mm -hmm. just from this kind of triangular-shaped head. Yes. Uh, very indicative of, uh, of Viperidae. And yeah, it does. It looks like a good size, and it's quite a complete shed. Uh, I've not seen one in such good condition for a while. When we hopefully find one, they'll hopefully be sticking their tongue out and doing a whole load of things. What are the snakes going to be doing while we're standing over them filming them? Yeah, so snakes, you know, they, they have eyes, but their eyesight is, is in varying degrees of acuteness. And adders in particular, their eyesight isn't fantastic, but they're, um, they're very well adapted to know when prey or potential predators are near. They've got heat pits on the side of their, their jaws, um, which allow them to detect body heat of other, other animals. Mm -hmm. um, but what they've also got obviously is that forked tongue um, and they've got a very special organ inside the top of their, their head called a Jacobson's organ. Um, and what they're doing with their tongue is they're effectively tasting the air. They're picking up on the chemicals, the pheromones that we give off and other species give off. And they're taking a, a taste of that air, if you like, and then touching that tongue to the top of their head, that Jacobson's organ uh, on the inside of their mouth. And they're able to then sort of work out potentially whether it's prey or whether it's a, a predator. Um, and they're also able to distinguish whether it's off to their left or their right or right in front of them. That's why it's forked. They're sure. able to sort of like uh, taste it, if you like, on one side to the other. The adder is kind of a bonus sixth animal to Scotland's Big Five. But another one that has been attacking us all day is the midge. How how many midges do you think are in Glen Rosa right now? Are we talking millions? I would have thought so, yeah, millions and millions. God, I'd be eaten alive. I reckon I've lost about half a pint of blood. <laughs> Horrible. Right, let's find some snakes. Oh yeah, we've got one here, Mike. Oh yes. My first adder. There's a, uh, a nice young female by the looks of it. Just in there, curled up. Oh, asking. yes. <gasps> There's actually two. There's two? Yeah. Wow. Much bigger one underneath as well. Yeah, yeah. Still another female. 
is that size there, that second one, is that about normal? Uh, no, I say these were both juveniles because they're quite small, uh, especially for females. Females are bigger than the males. They've obviously got to carry the, the eggs yeah. and the young inside of them. They're snakes that don't lay eggs. They're ovoviviparous, which means they create the eggs, but then they actually hatch the young inside of them. And then they okay. give birth to live young. Very cool. And they just chill in pairs like that? Uh, they often will, yeah. Um, uh, you can find them in quite quite uh, large groups sometimes. Um, but they'll be out here now because luckily we've got a bit of sun, although it's quite windy. And they're obviously coming out to try and bask in that sun and warm themselves up a bit. They can then get out on their days looking for prey. What a beautiful animal. Yeah, they are. They're stunning. Thank you so much, Jake. Thank you. With three animals in the bag, two of which being the most elusive on the list, we headed out of the glen and up into the hills to find the most findable animal of our six. That right there is the largest land animal in the UK. So Kenya has the elephant, the USA has the American bison, and we have the red deer. Now they're quite far away on that ridge over there, but one of our guys has sent the drone over. Look at those antlers. They get that name because during summer, their coats go this sort of brownish, reddy color. There's a very famous painting of a red deer stag in a landscape just like this, and it's called the Monarch of the Glen. And when you see them in real life, it is the perfect title for these animals, especially in a landscape like this. Now, there is a slight downside to these red deer, but it is all our fault. We killed off all the big predators in the UK that used to eat red deer, predominantly wolves. That has meant that since then, the red deer population has exploded and in their sheer numbers, they actually start damaging woodland and moorland just like this. That means we have to have an annual deer cull to keep the population down and keep things manageable. There have been proposals though to reintroduce those predators that we killed off Lynx and wolves are the ones being touted right now to keep that deer population under control. I'm up for that. Okay, next. Feeling fairly happy with ourselves, Jake took us to the coast road on the west of the island to try and find the first of our two aquatic animals. That little guy over my shoulder is a common seal, otherwise known as a harbour seal. And they can be seen from pretty much any coastal village here on the Isle of Arran. We've been driving past these guys pretty much every day this week. Can we all agree that they are sea doges? They're so cute! The pups are born between June and July, which means in these waters right now, there are one to two month old seal pups. Tell me you wouldn't want to give one of them a good pat on the side. But please don't, they're wild animals, they've got teeth, and to be honest, if you get within 50 feet of them, they're gonna bugger off into the water anyway. They don't really have any natural predators here. Sometimes there's a pod of orcas that makes its way around the island, heading up towards the Hebrides, but that's quite rare. Although, with our seas becoming warmer and warmer, and more and more shark species coming to the UK, these seals could be in hot water in more ways than one. Look at him hanging out there. Look at him. That's his sofa. He's just chilling out. Jake, to most people, it will just look like these seals are chilling out, having a good time. What is the actual meaning behind them sitting up on the rocks like that? Yeah, so they, uh, they're obviously well insulated, as, as we can see. Um, they have got that good thick layer of blubber. But, you know, the ocean is still cold um, and in order to aid in their digestion and also to sort of save on some calories, uh, they will haul out onto the rocks so that they can bask in the sun, but you'll find them doing it even when the weather is horrible because the ambient air temperature is still so much warmer than what that ocean is. Yeah. Is there much conservation that goes into these seals? I guess because they've not got natural predators and it doesn't seem like they're competing against much, do you have to put any work in with them? Not a great deal that we do directly with the seals, but obviously we do have various uh, protected areas on Aran uh, of ocean. We have the marine protected area uh, in Lamlash Bay and the no-take zone, and all of that will be helping to contribute to, uh, to more resilient fish stocks, which obviously in the long run means 
or pray for the seals. Okay. And have you seen said orca pod? I have not, no. I've never, unfortunately. But uh, we, we know from the Hebridean Whale and Dolphin Trust that there is one small pod of orcas that frequent the Clyde. Um, but yeah, no, I've never seen them, unfortunately. Okay, maybe next time. Yeah, maybe. Incredibly, we had seen four out of Scotland's big five, as well as our bonus animal, the adder. With the light starting to fade, it was only the otters to go. What are we actually looking for, especially in the water? Yeah, so, um, so if we see them in the water, it can be very easy to mistake them for seals. Mm -hmm. um, but there's one sort of dead giveaway, and that is that as the otters uh, go to dive down, they've obviously got that long tail, and that will kind of follow them like a bit of a telltale, and uh, you'll be able to see that uh, uh, pop into the air for a second before it vanishes underwater. That'll help you distinguish between a seal and an otter. Okay, well, yeah, we've been so lucky today. In fact, we've just seen another red deer stag just up there on that yeah. cliff, just by himself. So that was another bonus, but fingers crossed, there's an otter somewhere along this coastline. Yeah, hopefully so. We scanned and scanned the coastline of Locranza for over an hour, but if the otters were around, they were keeping a very low profile. Bagging all six, sadly, wasn't to be. Jake, it looks like we've failed at the final hurdle, but if you're gonna fail anywhere, this is not a bad spot. How do you get any work done when you can just come and sit in a place like this? Yeah, it can be tricky, it is beautiful. Well, I must say, as a man who's into his venomous snakes and a proud Scotsman, it's been amazing today. So thank you so much for mm. taking us round. Good luck with everything, National Trust. And yeah, today's video was about venomous snakes in Scotland. What next? <laughs>